you sent me some questions on uh, Twitter mm -hmm. that maybe we can start with. Um, I guess I'll just knock out the, the quick and easy ones. Uh, so uh, the channel that I'm running, Corey Gaming, I am running it by myself. Okay. But, wow. <laughs> uh, I, I do get help from people whenever I need some uh, interview or uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I, I need like a, someone to just act on camera. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen um, how many of my videos you've seen, but sometimes I'll have this this guy named Guy, who's uh, my partner, mm -hmm. uh, come into videos, and sometimes I'll just, you know, call him up, and it's like, I need somebody to act stupid on camera, and <laughs> you do it, and uh, he's like, oh, man, I love to, he loves being in front of the camera, so, um, you know, that's how I, I, I work with other people, I guess, Yeah. but in terms of managing the channel, and managing, uh, and, you know, making the script, and and editing and and shooting, filming, all the technical stuff. Uh, that that's that stuff I've been taking care of. Uh, every once in a while, if I do need another camera, another hand, if I'm interviewing, going out to interview some people, um, I will you know get like a second camera. Um, that that happened a couple of times. I think I made a video on Tekken Crash, uh, where uh, at the time I, I wasn't playing any Tekken. I didn't really know anyone, so um, I had a friend, uh, a Tekken guy named Chris. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he uh, he came and he said, "Okay, I'll be in front of the camera as like a host or whatever." And then, uh -huh. um, and then, uh, and then I got somebody else to bring a, a second camera, and we just raided uh, Tech and Crash and just like interviewed all these people. And uh, it's you know sometimes you just kind of have to like uh, you know make a makeshift team. Uh -huh. But that's that's a minority because like you, you have to pay people if you're you know if you're doing this stuff regularly, right? You can't um, you can't uh, have like a camera crew. Um, every time, right? But right. every once in a while, you can ask a favor, and then like you know, I'll buy you lunch or, or dinner. Yeah. Um, and so that that you can you can kind of work that way, and if you really need something for your videos, but mm -hmm. generally for my analysis videos, my video essays, uh, it's um, you know, I spend a long time writing, mm -hmm. and then um, you know, and then I start editing. Uh, for for me, editing is like the easy part. I oh wow. Really <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I have a background in um, in like TV production, film, uh, stuff like that. So um, I've been editing for a long time. Uh, I didn't go to like film school or anything, but it's just um, uh, I, I started off with wedding videos actually. So wow, uh, I was making money doing edit wedding videos when I was uh, when I was like twenty or something like that. Uh huh. And um, yeah, at that at that point, I just you know I had had a camera and, and decided that maybe I'll make a short film. And I, I made a little short horror film with my with my uh, friend friend, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, you know didn't really go anywhere, but um, it was like a fun little project. Uh, uh -huh. But the actor that was in that film actually went went to Hollywood. Uh, his name is uh, Johnny Simmons. Oh my and, gosh! Uh, it, it's, it's 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 pretty crazy, right? Because like you know like he's like, you see him in like movie. He's he doesn't like have like starring roles or anything. Uh, -huh. uh But like you see him like sprinkled throughout. Um, Hollywood films now, so yeah, uh, I don't know. It's filmmaking and stuff like that. It's just a fun thing to do. And uh -huh. then when I lived in China, I I basically um, I lived in China for two years. Uh, I was studying the I was also the time to, to make some money and um, and uh, basically like there's a lot of downtime. I was in the I was in a rural area, so I got um, basically I got a camera. Uh, I had a some editing software, Vegas at the time. Uh huh. Yep. And uh, I know a lot of people use Vegas. Uh, I don't use it anymore, but um, that's that's what I started on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I basically, you know, made a lot of like little uh, test films with my friends, and basically, uh, basically stupid videos of uh, you know my friends like shooting each other and stuff. So <laughs> um, I, I learned uh, After Effects that way. So um, there's a program called After Effects, which is uh, it's an Adobe program. And that's probably the best software for uh, infographic kind of stuff, like uh -huh. you know some of the animation and visual stuff that you see. Yeah. Uh, that that software is kind of my like my main software that I use for all the fancy work. Uh -huh. And then the editing stuff, um, I, that software has changed throughout throughout the years. So I was using Vegas for a while. Mm -hmm. um, then I switched to Adobe Premiere, mm -hmm. uh, which worked. Which was more stable for me. Yeah, I didn't crash as much. <laughs> um, and then now I'm using um, uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, by Black Magic. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, that software is um, uh, is actually free. Oh uh, wow! For, like a really functional version. It's mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the origin of that software is um, it used to be uh, a, a piece of software. Well, it, it was just called um, DaVinci Resolve, uh -huh. and that was the software that was used in Hollywood for color correction. It still is. It's, yeah. It's, the standard it's a very advanced piece of software with the Jeez. hardware panel and everything it's it cost like twenty five thousand dollars at the time oh my god like, yeah it, 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 <laughs> it, it was, it's a real piece of uh software but then a company called black magic um bought out the software their hardware company uh, they make cameras and stuff and uh, they basically brought down the price uh they kept on bringing down the price of the software because uh, they were using the software um uh, to try to get more people to uh, buy their hardware equipment, right? Right. And eventually, they brought down the price uh, to free uh, for, for uh, um, a very you can do for um, pretty much like any, almost anything that you need. Like ninety five percent of the functionality is there, uh -huh. and you can render out the videos. There's no like, you know, terrible limitations or anything like that. Right. Um, that that software. Um, has a, a full version which allow which has like a few extra features like noise reduction if your shot is really noisy it'll it has a really good algorithm for uh, reducing noise and uh -huh. like a couple of other things but um, but the free version will is a, is a great start and you can you can make an entire film with that piece of software cool and uh, and the full the full version will cost like uh, I think three hundred dollars um, but you don't really need it and and if you ever get to the point where you know, um, you think it's worth it, you can buy it. It's much, it's a much better deal than the Adobe subscription, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion. I, I stopped using the Adobe uh, subscription model because uh, I, I wasn't very happy with the, the, the newer software. Right. It was it's kind of like crashing. It, it works and, you know, it's good software, but it was just like the alternative was like uh, really good. So yeah. uh, I just switched it over to DaVinci Resolve. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter what uh, editing software you use, don't think of um, uh, when it comes to editing software, like they're all more or less similar. You uh -huh. have like a place where you put your clips and then you can put the clips onto your timeline and then you can, you know, chop it up and, you know, all, the software has very similar, all, all they, they all have very similar features. So um, it's not like you can't do something with you know this particular editing software like, right that's that's more visual effects so like mm -hmm. if you if you want to do like uh you know 3d graphics or uh you know infographics that are really advanced um then then that kind of stuff you have to start looking at what kind of software is good mm -hmm. good to learn um so so yeah when it comes to editing software don't don't worry too much about um uh like Use the one that that's right for you. Okay, uh, cool. You, you'll, you can go through them. Uh, you can, you know, they all have their trial versions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you can just kind of uh, uh, see which one is is easy for you to learn. I know Maximilian, dude, he's using <laughs> Vegas after you know all these years. Right? All these years. And, I mean, uh, my friends use Vegas for forever. I think like he started using it, and then after that, he hasn't done like a lot of content creation in a while. But I know he used Vegas for a long time, so I still hear about yeah. it every so often. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Vegas is is perfectly fine. I mean, um, it's a. Uh, uh, I, I the only problem I had was I was making like I was making a feature film at the time, uh -huh. like, like an indie film. Yeah. And I, 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 I it was like an hour and a half long, and like it just like it kind of choked on that. I uh -huh. had all these effects and everything, and it just like was choking on that. And that was like an older version. Maybe the newer version it wouldn't do that. But I'm guessing you're not going to be making hour and thirty minute like you know feature films, you know all uh, all the time. Right? Yeah, so, probably not anytime soon. Yeah, so um, I guess we maybe we should. Uh, I. I think it's cutting I, out a um, little. Yeah, I was gonna Hello. say. I think it's cutting out a little bit. Hang on. Hello. Hello. Are you there? Oh, are you there? Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm here now. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say. I couldn't uh, tell if it's. I can't tell if it's freezing or if it's the connection. It like is getting a little bit choppy, and I don't know if that's because. Hang on. Okay. Um. It, it's. Is it okay now? 
Yeah, it's weird. It's okay now. It was, it was like starting to kind of chop out before, and then you, I wasn't sure if you could hear me, and then it's it's kind of like in and out. I'm not sure why. Okay. Um. Well, it's it's working okay now. Yeah. Uh, right? Cool. So yep. Let's just uh, try to roll with this. Um. All right. So I talked a bit about like the more technical side mm -hmm. of things. Uh, oh yeah. Uh. I, I guess before I move on. Um. When it comes to making videos, filming interviews, filming people. Um. Doing skits. Now, uh, your phone is good enough. Oh. Uh, there's no, yeah, there's a lot of shots that I've shot. I mean, if you're using a phone from 2005, yeah. I don't know, but <laughs> if you're using like a relatively new phone, uh -huh. uh, you know, some Android phone or, or iPhone. Yep. Uh, you know, the, the stuff that can do like HD, right? Yeah. That stuff will, uh, will be good enough quality wise. So the only problem, smaller, ca the cameras with the smaller sensors, mm -hmm. they, they have more trouble in low light. They don't have much, you're in a very, uh, that's where the smaller, uh, not be as good as the, the bigger, fancier cameras. Right? Okay. So they are uh, not so good in low light. Uh Oh, I think it froze. Are you still there? Um, but uh, you know, oh, is um, yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear my voice? Yes, the camera yeah. is. Hello. Yep. Hello. Okay. Hello? Yeah. All right. Okay. You hear me? Yeah. All right. Okay. So um, so yeah, yeah, no need to buy like a big fancy camera if unless you're doing like you know unless you want crazy like 4K and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, so I've shot a lot of stuff. Uh, there's a video called uh, what. Evo Japan was like. Yeah. And 90, 99% uh, was of that was shot on my cell phone. Oh, and awesome. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you can, and nobody knew, like, you know, Esteban Martinez, like the, the the video guy for like all the FGC stuff, he actually messaged me. He's like, whoa, what did you shoot on? Like, yeah. on video. I was like, I shot on a, on a, on my phone with a $100 gimbal. One of those. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Gimbal thing. So, it, light wasn't a problem there. You had there was plenty of light. Mm -hmm. There are only a few places where there was like really low light, um, where I uh, I had to bust out my my bigger camera. Uh -huh. But uh, I want to test out that camera. Now the only problem with like the um, your phone is the support. It doesn't have a lot of like uh, you need some support gear obviously for it. So it it's kind of you know it kind of sucks to have to hold it all the time. Like yeah. Uh, it's, it gets all shaky and it's, it's not a good form factor, right? You're, you're, uh, it's a tiny thing. So yeah. you can, you can get like uh, maybe some support equipment. Uh, there are tripods that help put your phone on there. Yeah. So, um, that's, uh, yeah. So it'll get you really far and like just, um, you know, it has all the auto features. It even has autofocus. The phones are so good. Yeah. You know, I was going to say, and I have, back in... oh, no, go ahead. Finish what you were going to say. Yeah, back in my day, it was just you, phones didn't have any of that, so you had to actually have like a relatively expensive uh, camera. But go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say I have a Google Pixel, and it's like probably one of the best phones I've ever had. Okay. And like when I record with it or take photos, like when I was in um, Japan and Thailand last year, like we took you know a little bit of footage and a few pictures, and the quality of those photos is like they're they just look good so it's kind of nice to hear like that i could just use my phone to to create content and and uh the smaller stuff i guess sometimes uh, the big awesome. stuff <laughs> yeah yeah the, the, the pixel definitely has really good tech inside uh so um yeah um also uh if you're if you're doing uh, if you're gonna use your phone uh the the Another problem with the phone, and mm -hmm. this is with every camera, even the most expensive cameras, yeah. is the, the built-in microphones are never good. Oh, yeah. You can yeah. have, like, a $2,000, like, you know, Sony a7 III. The, the built-in microphone is just, don't use it unless you absolutely have to and you're, you're <laughs> stuck. Okay. There's no way you can get to a store or anything, like, uh, if, if you want to make quality content. Because it's better to have good audio yeah have video by far i mean you've seen probably seen videos where like it looks great but the, the it sounds like they're in a the bathroom yep and, yep uh, 
yeah and it's just like you lose your interest so fast so mm -hmm. um so yeah just a, a lapel mic is usually good that's what i use uh, uh i got this um I, I have like a one of those little pocket lapel mic recorder things yep um uh, i think it's mine's like a task cam but that i use to you know record like all the top pro players and everything uh -huh. uh, and i've never really had a problem with it um and uh, the, th the thing that's good about a lapel mic is you it can get really close to the talent's mouth right mm -hmm. and the most important thing about audio is you want it to be closer um to your talent that's why you they people hire you know um audio guys to do uh boom people in like movies right you see yeah. them, like, holding the holding the boom pole yeah and trying to get as close as possible and they what those guys do is they literally literally ride the frame of the image they put the microphone right outside the frame as close to the talent's uh mouth as possible that's and if those crazy guys are just like if those guys are like a foot off they get fired uh, oh my god <laughs> yeah because it's, it's a it's exponentially like the audio quality just sounds that much better every every little inch mm -hmm. so proximity is really really important so um okay uh just keep that in mind whenever you're doing uh and and like i'd rather have like a cheap built-in microphone where the, the the talent is the the talent's voice is closer than like a thousand dollar microphone where the talent is just way too far away uh -huh. so um it, it, microphone quality you know there's some microphones like shotgun mics that are kind of designed to like you know reach a little bit further mm -hmm. but even those mics say sound way better the closer you get so just uh that's it's one thing to keep in mind about audio okay and that's really the secret to audio is is the closeness and that's why lapel mics are preferred in so many cases because you can get close to the the talent and it doesn't look weird you know if you have a boom mic in the shot it looks weird right? <laughs> yeah. if you have a lapel you know you know everyone's used to like little little mic here and then if you want to get really fancy you can hide it under the shirt <laughs> you can like do tape under the shirt so the people do that you know to, to to get a clean shot where it looks like they don't have a microphone uh -huh. i don't think that's necessary personally um but if you want to go the extra mile uh there are tutorials online to to show you how you can hide lapel microphones but cool. um yeah so uh i guess that's that's a very important piece of technical yeah information. And that's some, uh, something yeah. that uh, I think a lot of people don't like think about it because, you know, when they're experiencing content, they there's, there's different ways to kind of experience all the footage and content that we view. But if I see a video and I'm listening to it and it sounds like a Muppet is talking or like it's very muffled, it, it does take my attention away and it takes away from the actual quality of that entire, you know, piece. Like it's like, OK, great. Yeah, the footage yeah, is absolutely. great, but the audio is like making it hard for me to kind of engage with it. So it's, it's cool that you pointed that out. And I would have never, you know, really thought about that. Yeah, yeah awesome. All right. Um, so um, I guess uh, I guess a, a little technical detail, I won't spend much time on it, but um, to use a microphone with a separate recorder, you're going to have to sync the audio in post uh, okay. in your editing software. Mm -hmm. But um, most DaVinci Resolve has a feature where it will, you just put it in and and you can select the two clips and it'll, uh, there's a way you can, uh, there's a function that automatically aligns the audio. So, oh, cool. Sweet. Or another piece of software that would do that, or you'd have to do it by hand. But these days, uh, you, you can have that, so you can align the audio. Some lapel mics will, I think Rode makes one, that one goes directly into your phone. Mm -hmm. um and uh, you can you can just plug that directly into your phone into then lob somebody up and uh you get the audio right in the file so there are two ways you can do it but that's there's just two options cool. uh, I, I do the separate way because i like my i like having a separate recorder yeah um, but uh yeah born free is uh using that way right now um but uh you know it's you can you can test different things out okay Sweet. so um yeah, so when it, when it comes to content, I guess I'll talk a little bit about um, how I approach content. Obviously, my content is kind of you know different from Born Free or Maximilian Dude or right. Vesper Um the, the the kind of content I do, I say stuff, and then I'll sometimes do like um, like interview kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the way that I approach it, and this is different from the way Born Free does. The way Born Free does it is, uh, you know, um, it's it's one way of doing it, and uh, and I definitely like I, I I watch like 
know, almost all his like interviews and stuff. And what's good about Born Free is he'll do like ver- a very comprehensive interview, right? Right. Like one of your favorite players, mm-hmm. and he'll timestamp it, and you can just go to like chapters. He'll break down, and you have all yeah. the stuff. So like you can just skip to like you know really interesting stuff, or you can just leave it on and listen to it while you're cleaning your room, like the whole hour thing. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's really cool that way. Uh, I I don't do that. I do. Mm-hmm. I have a different approach, and I'm, there's no you know right or wrong way of doing it. Um, but the way I do it is uh, if I if I borrow a person like a, <laughs> yeah. like a pro player, uh-huh. uh, um, I I think it's interesting that I can make with that that uh, player. Uh-huh. and and so like for example, I was, you know, box that I that I, that the company sent to me, uh-huh. and and I was like, wow, okay, he wants to like borrow it and test it out, and okay, I'll just ask him about this and I'll and then lo and behold he invites me over and like there's JDCR and, and Junting there <laughs> and uh, what the heck is this thing right I mean this is kind of interesting you know you, know, you guys like a controller um, for playing Tekken uh-huh. pro players like what are their thoughts on like how uh, you know does it will this break the game will this like make it unfair yeah you know all these like interesting things and um, it was a ton of fun, like messing around with it, and uh, that kind of that created the content right there, right? Mm-hmm. That was, uh, uh, you know, when do you ever get to see Junting messing around with like one of these controllers and doing things like backdash techniques that you can't yeah. do with the regular controller? So um, <laughs> that worked out there. Uh, I I wanted to I wanted to do a video about and uh, that would be just in one premier um like a uh, uh, runaway defensive style play player uh-huh. and so um i had an idea for a video he didn't come to evo japan because uh he just had a child uh-huh. um but that was one of my ideas was like okay i can interview him about like you know like you know when you frustrate people like uh what you know uh, what do you notice what do you notice when when you know you're frustrating them and do you capitalize on that that kind of stuff a very yeah. specific kinds of things so I'll, I'll make like i'll make a entire video just based on the concept and like when i did kudons it was basically like making a name for yourself yeah and that kind of worked out because his name the way he made his nickname kudons was because he typed his korean name on his uh on his keyboard <laughs> uh, it but he had the english mode on so yeah it, it just turned into kudons which was just like a name that seemed like it worked it, just a made up word but yeah uh, that's how he made his name for himself but then the pun on that is how he you know got known as well right? <laughs> so that's yep. kind of like a, you know when you think of that you're like whoa i have to make a video about that right yeah and, uh, it's such a good like concept and, and memorable mm-hmm. and, uh, and so uh that's that's how i do a lot of like when i have interview subjects of uh people that i can uh you know pick their brains for i will try mm-hmm. to get uh, that kind of special knowledge out of it. like for uh for my other content my analysis videos one one of the things that i really focus on is um uh i guess one of the things that i'm really get i really get inspired by is actually just talking to my friends about fighting games yeah so i'm sure you've had conversations with friends about like uh you know street fighter or or whatever game you're playing and you had some probably kind of interesting, um, you know, in- interesting discussions that nobody ever recorded or or anything, right? Yes. And those kinds of moments, I think, are some of the most interesting things because it's like, why aren't people talking about this stuff, like, you know, uh, on YouTube or yeah. in, in other places? Like, why is it that you have these cool, interesting conversations with these people uh, when you're like hanging out with your, um, you know, fighting game homies, and then <laughs> suddenly? you know like you go on youtube and then like and then suddenly you don't have any you know you don't know what to do or what to what to make and yeah that nothing right there the stuff that you, because when you have a conversation with somebody and and you're really getting into it and you're having you know it's just so fun to talk about something that's proof right there that the content's going to be good right yeah because you're already testing this kind of this concept right so i i've had a lot of conversations sometimes i'll even test it i'll even like talk to my fighting game friends about something and you can tell like if they're really interested in in that topic or not because 
they'll try to fill in or they'll try to have uh, their say. Mm -hmm. And if they're not interested, they'll try, you know they might change the topic. That's how conversations happen, right? right. Uh, if you if you um, if you just you know you can just tell the enthusiasm by um, by talking to people, and then you can tell your own enthusiasm by how much you want to talk about it. Yeah. And if if it all works out, if it's like you know everybody you you get to all these people talking about something, um, then you definitely have something that will be interesting. And then other people, uh, when they watch it, they'll want to talk about it too. And they'll yeah. comment. You, know, you don't have to tell them to comment. They'll comment by themselves <laughs> when they have that kind of uh, topic. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, I mean, there are people who kind of, uh, so like, a, uh, I don't know if you know about Ernesto Lopez's channel. He does a lot of like FGC news and drama and, and oh, and that's stuff. so interesting because right. I've never, I've actually never heard of that. I all the oh, okay. you know gossip and drama and news I ever hear about the FGC is always on you know Twitter and occasional content, but I've never heard of his yeah, yeah. his page before. So okay, so I mean, like you know, there's like there's there's always drama and stuff like that. But the reason yeah. why drama is seen a lot, um, a lot of people, uh, you know, the reason why people love talking about drama stuff is because it's it's conflict, right? Right. And uh, there's the entire TV genre called <laughs> drama, right? Yeah. <laughs> Conflict attracts views. And so that's one kind of topic, like that people talking about, that makes people talk, right, and have opinions. Right. And that's why that, that kind of content is effective. So mm -hmm. um, the way I see content is is if it gets people talking and interested, um, that's good. Uh, you know, I think drama in general is kind of like I talked to Ernesto about this as well. He does feel like that's not like his favorite thing to do, you know. Yeah. But, um, but his uh, his viewers like it, so you know he's kind yeah. of like doing it for the watchers and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, it's not like his most favorite, and you know it's true. Like drama is kind of an easy way to kind of like get people talking and, and watching a video and yeah, and a discussion. But it's not the only way, obviously. Right. So um, so my take is basically like the kind of co interesting conversation, sometimes even really nerdy conversations, right? Like um, playing side by side, you know, versus playing head to head. Yeah. You know, that seems like a really nerdy like topic that, you know, uh, maybe only like really die hard fighting game people would be interested in. Mm -hmm. But I, know, I talked to people about that and they found that super interesting. Like, it, you know, <laughs> like when you play next to somebody, if they smell really bad, they didn't take a shower, <laughs> that's going to affect your gameplay. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, and like I mean, I'm sure you know, like uh, you know, we've all been there, right? We've all played. Yeah. You know, there might be somebody who like reeks, and uh, and it's like there's no rules against that, right? No. So the only thing you can do is play head to head, right? Yeah. And then what what do we lose when we do that? You know, what's the thing that we don't like about that? Maybe it's less personal or or whatever, right? Yeah. So that's that's a, that's a great topic, and that topic came about just by conversation with my friends, and that's one of those topics I was talking about where you you really wouldn't think of it until you, you know, had a discussion how, how funny and interesting that that right. conversation can be, right? So that that video ended up being, you know, like a, a like all this all this interesting stuff that I dug up uh, with through research, right? Yeah. And research is something that takes a long time for me. That's one mm -hmm. of the things that, that takes almost all my time. Uh, I'm working on a video that's been taking me three months right now. Uh -huh. um, my next analysis video is basically it's called uh, "Why Button Mashing Doesn't Work," and it's basically um, it's it's an interesting topic because you know people who don't really understand how to play fighting games they don't button mash and yeah and there's nothing wrong with that. There's you you button mash you don't know what to do in a fighting game because right. uh, you know your button mashing is kind of like flailing your limbs when you're you know in a fight, right? Yeah, most people don't know how to fight. Um, mm. I don't know you. I, I've seen you do like fitness stuff. You do any martial arts? Or I don't like do any martial arts. Um, I pretty much just like powerlift, and I compete. Okay. In str I was a previous strongman competitor, but I don't do any martial oh, arts. Okay. My nephew does taekwondo, so I like at least spectate. You know what okay, he does yeah, events so and stuff. You, so yeah, the, um, you kind of know that you know there's there's like martial artists, and then there's like you know throwing your limbs around. Yeah. Right? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people, they, they don't have any choice when they get into a fight, so they just throw their limbs around, and that's, mm -hmm. that's completely normal. So I, I think that that's, that's an interesting topic. So then I go basically describe the fundamentals of fighting games, like how the fighting games work and why button mashing doesn't work. Right. By, you know, having to explain, you know, meaty attacks and, you know, um, like okizeme and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And it's kind of like a, it's like a tangential thing, but that's actually what it, my goal is to teach people. But, um, but... Most people they're just kind of interested to know like oh so i can't button mash because of that and if 
if I have a very nice detailed you know explanation that's kind of interesting, um, then people who aren't into fighting games might be might know about learn about Okizema, right? Right. Things like that. So that that kind of thing is um, uh, is what uh, Vsauce does. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like this concept of this thing called tangential learning. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of educational YouTubers out there that that teach people stuff. But Vsauce is really funny because his kind of idea is like, you know, you're not going to, um, you know, people don't really, there's a lot of people who don't like to learn about stuff. They're like, hey, I'm going to tell you about Okizeme. You want to hear this? And they're going to be like, uh, you know, like, oh, what, what the heck is that? And, you know, they might start, you know, looking at their time. Looking yeah. At their watch, yeah. Whatever. But if you're to be like, you know, someone's button mashing, it's like, if you were to ask them, like, do you know why you know, button mashing actually like makes you lose. They might be a little more interested in that, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, like, you know, do you know why the sky is blue? It's not so interesting because maybe you learned it in high school, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you forgot it. You know, why is the sky blue? Well, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's this phenomenon or whatever. But you know, uh, if you make the question into why, why are your eyes blue, right? Yeah. Uh, then it's more interesting. But th it's the same science behind. You know why someone's eyes are blue is the same science behind why the sky is blue. Mm -hmm. So um, people love explanations, even if they hate learning. Even if they say I, I don't like learning, yeah. People love the explanations. So mm -hmm. uh, whenever, you, if you make any instructional content or anything like um, fighting game related, yeah. it's good to know that it's very, you know, it's kind of dense stuff. It's very, very. It can be very dry sometimes. When you start, start talking about frame data, yeah. plus frames, minus frames, that can get kind of dry for a lot of people. So, right. Uh, but people love explanations, and that's one of my challenges right now with the current video I'm working on. I'm trying to take these like really dry topics that like people would never be interested in mm -hmm. outside of the FGC, yep. and trying to explain it in a way that like people really get it and will be inspired to maybe try these games. Uh, yeah. Try to maybe even open a frame data app or something you know, yeah. by themselves just to like look at it and um and it's it's not easy because like something you just want to be like this is this is frame data and you know, <laughs> this, is plus, this is minus two don't press a button here you know <laughs> yeah you want to say that but then it's like you know then it, it you, you might not get that um a certain audience and, right. and that's okay if you just want to do fgc content for fgc people mm -hmm. then go for it like there's nothing yeah uh, there's nothing wrong with it content is like it's like there's so many things you can do yeah and you know not everybody has to be like uh you know um you know one content creator mm -hmm. you know the most successful one you know no it, you can do so many different things and um and people you'll start finding people who appreciate that and you'll you'll build an audience that yeah way. and for and, me um, um it's kind of interesting that you bring up the point of like presenting FGC content or FGC like data yeah. and science to people who aren't fighting game people because I got my bachelor's in neuroscience, but presenting science to people who are not like directly science people, like the essentially like communicating science to others, you know, outside of like the science realm is actually pretty difficult. So you have to kind of like learn how to make things cool and make things approachable instead of like, here's the data table, here's a 15 page primary article worth of research presenting that in a fun like kind of interesting form is is like very rewarding you know when people are like oh that's so cool or oh i understand that now that that's like one of the most rewarding feelings i ever had um oh in yeah, that kind yeah, of field. yeah so definitely. definitely like uh i mean you have the neil degrasse tysons and yeah. uh, science educators who, yeah. will, who will basically like be able to like communicate all this science stuff that nobody would the public wouldn't know about mm -hmm. so um, yeah, I mean, that's, you can apply that to anything, even fighting games or yeah. you know, whatever, right? So, um, I think, uh, uh, you know, that's always been kind of my approach to, to making content, but mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's just one way. And, uh, you can, you know, like for me, like I, you know, I, uh, my personality is not as like enthusiastic and as fun as like other content creators. So, you, mm -hmm. you know, I can't just turn on the camera and just like, you know, <laughs> be, have an infectious energy. Like. But you definitely have like way more of an infectious, you know, energy. Oh, well, thank uh, you. Than, than I do. So, uh, I mean, I think, uh, I think, um, you know, if you were to make content, like, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, put the camera on yourself and mm -hmm. and talk. I think, uh, I think you can get, um, you know, a good audience just from that energy alone. And yeah. Then, 
you know, you can add on to that. So, um, so yeah, I mean, like, you know, I, I am a little bit camera shy also, so I, I didn't want to be on, you know, in front of the camera. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't want to be invisible because either. So like, I kind of sprinkle myself here and there, uh, more, more on Twitter just cause like, yeah. it's FGC and, you know, FGC, you know, a lot of people and, you know, you don't want to, you want to sh show your face sometimes yeah. to these people that you meet a lot. So, um, you know, otherwise, if I were just like a, you know, I, I could just be like uh, those uh, some some of the YouTubers who just like never ever show up. <laughs> you know? just... That's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Uh, like CGP Gray, you put like two pictures of him online, <laughs> and that's it. The <laughs> the, the myth, the YouTuber legend. Does... Yeah, yeah. He's like yeah, he's like a mystery, right? But um, so yeah, that's uh, I think that answers like. Uh oh, I, I, went, I did questions backwards. <laughs> That's okay. Time. Sorry, it like paused for a second. I think it's okay now. It was like really, really good for a span of time, and then it got it just okay. paused for a second. So it's kind of weird. It might just be our connection since you're in. Are you in Korea? Yeah, I'm in Korea. Yeah, right so I'm sure it's like Comcast sucks. I mean, we have Comcast here, so it's like sometimes it gets choppy for, yeah, I, for I, the I long distance. Yeah, yeah, it stinks, but yeah. we're making it work. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, I know the feels. I, I definitely <laughs> had that internet, I had that same internet for a long time. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think I covered um, your questions, uh, you know, uh, relatively thoroughly. Uh, if you have any questions to ask me about that or mm -hmm. just anything in general, um, is there anything that you're curious about my content? You can ask anything. Or... Um, I think like. It's so crazy because I feel like I have so many questions about content creation, but my, my one question is like, how long have you been doing this and what kind of inspired you to do it? That's okay. Um, so basically, um, when it came to, uh, my YouTube channel, it was like, I made that in 2015. Mm -hmm. So it was like four years ago, I think almost, yeah. almost exactly four years ago. And, um, and I made a channel cause like I, I had a local scene, street fighter scene. And they're like really good players that were yeah. playing and like, you know, basically world class players. And I'm like, you know, I I you know, I'm I'm doing um video work. That's my that's my job, right? So yeah. I have access to like you know, some cameras and audio equipment and I was like, you know, someone needs to make this kind of content. Like these are really good players. No one knows anything about them. And so I'm going to start, you know, making content about them. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I started the channel with like some interviews after a weekly and um, and then from there I just kept on um, you know making content on the channel like highlights uh, it was a uh, Street Fighter 4 at the time uh, I'd make like you know top five plays and just just kind of you know it, it wasn't like the most amazing content or anything but, right um, it, it, it's, it's the stuff that's interesting to me because that's my hobby it's fighting games right yeah so, um i saw a good opportunity there and then the the way i got into making analysis videos video essays that's the more interesting story is uh -huh. um when i saw a jimmy kimmel video online basically uh he like basically like shit on like gamers <laughs> like <laughs> who watch video games and stuff <laughs> and uh it's like it's coming from right uh like you know, people were online were kind of outraged, and they're like, you know, he was he had the whole like, uh, I mean, I'm sure people don't say this as much anymore. People he had the whole like, why would you watch video games when you can play it, and all these kind of like, you know, um, things. And they're like, man, this guy's this guy's so wrong. Yeah. And um, what had happened before is like, uh, you know, there's a Pacquiao uh, Mayweather fight, right? That yep. everybody was hyped for. I was super excited. Everybody like people they they uh, they come. They would tell me like, "Hey, let's go watch it in Korea. They're broadcasting it for free. Even we should go to a bar." Yeah. And like you know, I, it was it was all right of an experience. Like you know, it wasn't like um, it, the the fight was kind of uh, you know it went you know it, it was in May, it was in Mayweather style. You know, yeah. Very yep. and stuff like that. Whatever. Um, but you know that's boxing, and uh, and you know maybe I, you know I don't really understand too much of it. Maybe mm -hmm. there's some more intricate stuff that I'm not seeing. But it didn't like blow me away. And then like Evo comes around, Evo 2015 at the time. Yep. And my my you know I had some of my friends there to watch Evo, right? And we're at the top eight and watch fighting games, but they're losing their shit. Like 
you know, after we had to quiet down because like our neighbors were like, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, have, like starting to like complain, right? Yeah, so yeah. We had to we had to make sure um, that we were quiet because it was like it was you know, everybody was just like so hype. And then that's after that, that's when Jimmy Kimmel was like, why would anybody watch video games? It's so dumb. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, OK, I have to say something like I can't just let this. Can't just let it slide. Right? I can't just let this slide. I have to like say something. So, yeah, I just made it an essay like thing. And I already had editing skills from like doing wedding videos, and, mm -hmm. you know, freelance work. Yeah. So I was like, I'll just, I'll just uh, make a video essay on this. And and uh, and it was kind of unfair to boxing like I. You know, I, admit, I look back I'm like yeah uh, i was just kind of like uh it, it was kind of a reaction right yeah and, um and but then like that kind of fire and and that kind of emotion you it kind of went into the video and i think it kind of uh it got people to notice you know right and right a lot of people were mad at me you know because i wasn't fair to boxing and stuff like that yeah and uh, i don't have anything against boxing or anything it's just kind of this this reaction that i had and, and um, video was like uh, I want to say it's like the, the fairest video that I have. Yeah. Um, but it definitely was a, a super inspired video. Like I was, that was like, that was like me completely. Like, all right, I have to say this, and I'm gonna make this a statement as clearly as possible. Um, yeah. You know, no equivocation, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna use all my editing chops and everything to 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 state this because I have to say this because I also had a conversation about this with a friend. Um, Guy named Huda Man, the best Honda player from the Street Fighter Four days. Oh my gosh! Um, conversation, right? Yeah. And we're just like, yeah, like what's up, you know, like, and and so yeah, I just compiled all these, you know, cool reasons, uh, you know, why fighting games are, are awesome, you know, um, and uh, and yeah, so uh, that that became like the first video essay I did. I, yeah. I, I didn't call it an analysis or anything. I thought I, maybe I did. I think I called it that in hindsight, but then. I started doing more and more video essays on on fighting games, and then eventually it got to the point where um, I just like you know it became like a I had all these ideas, and I just started writing down every idea. I have like a book booklet of like hundreds of ideas. That's uh, awesome. That, they're not all going to be made, but I just choose like the best ones. And then if there's like a if there's like a video that I can um, that I think would be you know really useful or mm -hmm. um, uh, that'd be really helpful for people, I, I I make that, or if I'm like feeling really opinionated and I got like a really strong opinion about something, I'll I'll put that up there. You know, I'm not like a science educator, so yeah. Like, you know, I'm a I'm a gamer with opinions and stuff. So sometimes I'll put like uh, a stronger opinion. Uh, you have to kind of careful with that because you have to expect the the backlash from right. the audience. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have to be as fair as possible. But you know, that's the thing about opinions. There's there's always going to be some kind of bias, mm -hmm. but um. But that's also the the kind of YouTube, if you know you can choose what kind of YouTuber you want to be. You can be completely safe mm -hmm. and just not just talk about the games and and you know uh, like in their more technical stuff aspects. Um, you know, do what do whatever you want. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just kind of the path that I've chosen. I'm starting to be I'm starting to focus a little bit more. Like I think opinions are kind of cheap these days. Like, <laughs> yep. Many now, mm -hmm. and so like. I kind of instead of being a pin, instead of um, being more opinion oriented, a lot of my uh, my content is more. Uh, what I'm trying to do is is make it more useful, like a reference. Yeah. Uh, so, and basically, the goal for me now is to have a video that will make everybody have more informed opinions. I'm not choosing their opinions for them. But yeah. A video that will make everyone's opinion, even if they disagree, to be more informed. And that's, I think, the best thing uh, I can do right now mm -hmm. uh, with my content. So that's what that's what I'm doing. But, um, but yeah, it's uh, every, everyone has a different um, philosophy on what they want to do with their content. Regularity is a thing. I take a long time on my videos. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at other channels, they have a video like every day. Oh my gosh! I don't know how they do that? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, there's no wrong or right way. If anything, mm -hmm. I'm 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 doing it the wrong way because <laughs> everyone says like you have to regularly make content, and I'm like trying my best, and mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's not it's not always easy. 
and I was going to say, being being a, a one-man show running, you know, your channel, that's already amazing, but I can understand sort of, like, why or what, you know, is going on, because you have, like, projects you want to do, but you kind of have to go through planning and, and all that, and yeah, it's still uh, very impressive. And yeah. the thing is, I mean, this is, like, specifically about your content, but even the videos that come out, I feel like they leave an impression on people, you know? So you might not put out content every darn day, but people refer to it. I mean, my friends are always like, oh, did you watch Corey Gaming's like new video that, you know, was posted or whatever. Like they are always mentioning it. It's like something that leaves an impression on them for more than just like, okay, the next day, oh, wow, a new video. But it's like, oh, they just watched this video you put out and then they're excited for the next one whenever that comes out. So they don't put oh, you yeah, on- I'm very happy for that. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, yeah, that's, I'm glad that people wait for the videos. Yeah. That's, if they didn't, then I think people would have just forgot about and forgot about the channel. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say they're not gonna but, forget. They're not. <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 I mean, I, I'm glad that it's like that. Yeah. But, uh, definitely, I don't. Not for the pain of heart, because you know, if you don't have a video for a long time, you always have the existential panic of like, what am I doing? Is you know, am I a fraud now? <laughs> Those start, kind of start creeping in. Yeah. And, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of stressful, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's the path I've chosen and mm -hmm. uh, it has a lot of good stuff too. Like yeah. You said, people remember the content. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, sometimes a lot of people rewatch the content. They use it as a reference. Mm -hmm. They use it to help people. So I, I'm taking the most positive aspects of my channel. Um, you know, like, you know, sometimes I'll, sometimes not all the stuff, sometimes stuff is more, I have stuff in the past that's like kind of, you know, very strong opinions or, mm -hmm. um, you know, like some of my jokes fell flat or, you know. <laughs> stuff like that and like I, I, it's just it's just a constant like you're, you're constantly trying to do everything uh to improve every video right one up every video and, yeah uh, and yeah as long as you're doing that it's like fighting games you know you're when you start making videos um obviously everyone who starts making videos they're going to make a few duds mm -hmm. and that's the only thing you can do but if you if you uh just keep on if you make a video and then you get a response from uh, you know an audience, an honest audience. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes if you just get your friends and family to watch your video and give you critique, you're not going to get the honest answer. I, I mean, right. there's even even somebody you don't know, if they're like watching a video with you, they're going to have the courtesy to not like destroy your video, right? Yeah. Uh, um, so it's tough to get proper feedback there. And like I know, mm -hmm. I know, like YouTube comments and all these like online comments, online stuff, people have very um, some very vitriolic stuff, some yeah. really mean stuff, you know, like, I, of course, I've, I've, I've seen all the mean stuff. But the thing is, um, you can find nuggets of truth in there, you have to just like, there's a lot of crap in there. But then there's yeah. like nuggets of truth within mm -hmm. that crap that you have to like, dig up, but it's it is important. And it, it does help you improve your video. If you can just see, you don't have to follow what they say, but it's good to know that they're, um, that they're, uh, you know, don't like something. Yeah, you know, because like, you know, somebody who's being mean will not stop to go after your weakness. There's mm -hmm. no stopping them, right? Right. So that's the one thing. And uh, I, I did a, a talk, uh, I think last year, uh, at, at a university about that topic. And basically the way I deal with it is um, I kind of imagine I'm Professor X from X-Men, you know. <laughs> yep, yep. You have this amazing power, right? And, yeah. Uh, but when you when you look at a, a guy who has telepathy who can read people's minds you would think that it's just like whoa what a cool superpower to have you know i wish i was like that but then if you think about it like someone like him he probably hears all these stupid comments and vitriolic things yeah and if you think about it it's just youtube comments so professor x is basically <laughs> the guy who hears youtube comments all the time right mm -hmm. and um but then we all acknowledge why that's such a great superpower to have to be able to like read people's minds right, right. so if you can kind of frame it that way um, it's, uh, you can kind of see it, see these comments more as a tool. Um, I mean, you know, some mean comments will get to you, uh, you know, 10 positive comments, one mean comment, that mean comment is going to linger mm -hmm. in your mind for way longer. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I know women content creators, they definitely, they have an extra layer, you know, uh, uh they have to, um, you know, uh, go, go through, you know, you can see it on, on their channels. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, it's 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 not easy always, but it's always good to know to focus. It's good to focus on like the positive things, and even with the negative stuff, try to extract 
what can be useful from there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you're not going to get back at those people. Right. Anything. You can't, it's not a good idea. You can, <laughs> you can you know, reply to them like, you're a jerk or you're, you're stupid. <laughs> you're, just like a, you're just in your mom's basement, you know, yeah. or whatever. You can say anything you want, but it's just not going to help at the end of the day. So the best mm -hmm. thing you can do is extract what you can from their, their you know, crap comment. And if it's useful to you, then you can, you know, uh, better yourself, be make better content. And uh, I think that's really the best way to approach it. Um, if you completely shut off all feedback, then you're losing a big, uh, a big uh, tool for mm -hmm. um, kind of improving your content. Right. Like my audio, I had these weird water sounds on my mouth. Like I had these like, like sounds. <laughs> I, I was like, I had a really sensitive. I have a really sensitive mic, and like, yeah. in one of my videos, like three types of fighting gamers, like that was like the audio was pretty kind of bad on that video. I didn't like use like a filter or anything, or I didn't cut it out. Um, and this guy was like, you know, said something really mean, like, you know, let's fucking discuss you, disgust me, you know, you're making these <laughs> smacking, some oh smacking noises. God. I'm like, I was really mean. And like, that was totally not like a nice way of saying it, but it was true. And yeah. uh, now, now I cut it all out. My audio quality is much better. Yeah. But, um, but, and you know, I didn't, like, I could have just responded to that guy, you know, and been like, well, you know, you're, 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 worthless or whatever yeah you know, yeah yeah. ignore the criticism and then i would be worse and then i i would go down to that level yeah and you know, there's nothing good about that right, right. so that, that's that's kind of an example of like how i of course a lot of a lot of comments are just gonna be like really bad but that, that, that's that's one aspect of making content that, yeah uh, and that you have to deal with of course and even like kind of outside of content, but I think I was talking to somebody else about this, like when EXO Academy was released, obviously there is a lot of content like coming out for mm -hmm. me, my face is out there now. And yeah, despite yeah, yeah. being like this very like excitable, infectious, like infectious sort of, you know, person, I still get very, very intense social anxiety in some situations. So like, this is mm -hmm. my, this is like a, uh, a character strengthening and character building exercise for myself. So yeah, that yeah. statement that you just made about kind of taking all the feedback, you know, not not just like getting upset and wallowing in it and taking that feedback and using it as information is really, really, really empowering. I mean, I would have never turned it around. You know, I, I'll see a negative comment sometimes, like let's say like in the stream, like somebody will just say something. It happens all the time, but not so much for me. I haven't had a lot of bad experiences, but let's say somebody makes a bad comment, you know, I'll, I'll freeze up like there's. It's it's one of those things yeah, where like yeah. what what can I do better? What am I supposed to be doing that can prevent this kind of reaction? But there's yeah, nothing I, I can mean, do. So every, every, you're 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 gonna have like there's gonna be detractors and you know there's gonna be people who just troll and uh, mm -hmm. it's uh and it 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 it'll you know it'll get to you like yeah you know but even the top creators who like you know even if you look at like somebody with like what is it PewDiePie has like 80 million subscribers yeah like, you know about he's still gonna he still reads bad comments and they get that get to him every once in a while it'll be that one comment that yeah. will get to him that it will ruin his day for a while mm -hmm. um it's it happens to everybody and i think that just uh, that comes with the territory this is kind of the new new age of where everyone just can throw out any opinion right right to anybody like mm -hmm. you can tweet at celebrities like you know, so <laughs> yeah you, you know and they they see that stuff you like a president will see like a tweet you know that you made i mean i'm assuming he's looking at his twitter all the time because he can't stop but, yeah i was gonna say uh, yeah i mean <laughs> yeah it's, it's it, that's, that's the age we live in so mm -hmm. um you know i you know it's it's coming to grips with it is like it's like a process right i think yeah. it's in fighting games if you if you're like fighting a character that you don't like and i think the sooner you find out the sooner you accept that this is a character that you have to deal with or a matchup you have to deal with yeah uh, after you can get to trying to find a way to solve it Mm -hmm. So, um, that's kind of the goal. It's, but it, there is a process and there's no, we're all human. You can't, so, and you're not the only one whenever, whenever that happens, you're not the only one. Mm -hmm. you, you, it's always good to talk to other content creators and, you know, um, you can always message me or, um, you know, uh, other content creators, I'm sure. That yeah. They'll, you know, they'll, if you want to talk about like something that somebody said or whatever, and, uh, it helps, uh, it helps always to discuss uh and talk about like you you never know you might have so, you might talk be talking with somebody who had the exact same thing you know yeah and, uh, same story and and 
um, that's the importance of like having a community thing. That's one thing I think is lacking from content creators on uh, uh, in the FGC is there's like you know the, the commentators and stuff. They kind of all like get together. They have a little sub commentator community and their discords and stuff. And uh, players, I'm sure, unite. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah. they air tech and you know they talk about their character a lot. Uh, I know the Alex players definitely have a. They, they have like a union going on yeah it's so funny um, and and it's yeah, funny because yeah. like all the alex players i mean there's all that kind of stuff going on but even like all me and every other ed player on the earth like i think i follow a majority of ed players that are active on twitter and yeah. they all follow me and they all come into the stream and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. this uh, other you know weird Corey Bell? yeah <laughs> yeah. Corey Bell, yeah i i met him in evo japan a, a very funny guy he's yeah like, super young but like mm -hmm. he's like he he has like he has like all these old tastes, you know, like I'm, I'm, you know, I grew up in the nineties. So yeah, like, yeah I'm a nineties like, kid older. too. So, okay. Yeah. So it's funny. It's, Corey's funny to talk to you. Like, yeah, I totally played those games. And, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's funny kid. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Anything else um, that you want to talk about? Don't, don't worry about like time or anything. I rambled a bit. So yeah, um, no, it's like, fine. Like, like I said, um, I those were really my major questions kind of like again content creation I feel like at first was so broad to me I was like how do people get into this like obvious you know there's so many different ideas out there and concepts but the questions that I had sent you were kind of the major thoughts that I had you know going on I think yeah. once I decide to really take the leap and like start kind of doing more content creation I'll things will probably come up but right now you kind of covered all the bases as far as like how to get started what kind of programs you use to start off you know what's really important about content creation and kind of seeing your perspective about how you choose topics um and how you choose like what content you want to create that kind of like hit home for me because again i talk to my friends about random stuff all the time but i was telling my stream and i talked about it in my vlog for exo academy but like capturing moments is important for me like i experience moments in the fgc and i feel like capturing those moments and sharing it with people that's like what's very very important to me so content creation is something i feel like i can do um i just need a kind of a, a starting basis for it so yeah yeah all right but i hope this was useful i mean um uh, i guess uh, another thing i can throw in um before we conclude is um Another another good way to kind of gauge your content is just simply this use the rule of thumb of like is this something that I would watch you know like, yeah is, is this just content that I would watch and uh, you know if you can answer yes to that then you know people share interest with you you know they're 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 going to watch it yeah so um, so it's it's kind of a good way to think about it. I think the wrong way of going about it mm -hmm. uh, is um, like you know the cynical minded like oh these these idiots will watch this if i do this <laughs> oh my gosh you know like if i make content like this then you know these guys are just gonna flock to this because you know like and if you if you if you think it's what you're doing is completely dumb or stupid um but you think that all these other people will you know gravitate towards that um then you know it, it's not going to be inspired right right and uh it, it's I think that's kind of a, a trap and even like i mean it's the the what is it the the struggle between you know kind of expressing yourself mm -hmm. and then doing stuff that the audience wants right uh, and uh you can never go too far towards the audience direction because uh if you if you go to all the way to that audience deep end you're going to get cynical and it's uh it's not going to be content that you like and you're not going to be happy with it right uh and so and if the audience controls your content, then who's making the content? Is it you or the audience, right? So, yeah. uh, but then at the other end of the spectrum, you have, uh, you just make something that you want. Mm -hmm. um, what's good about that is if, even if no one watches it, you're happy with it. Yeah. Like, this is what you want to do. So you will always feel good about yourself, right? Right. And so that's the advantage of that. Um, maybe, maybe some of the stuff that you really like or, or, or are interested in is not the thing that gets the biggest audience. Uh -huh. If you can, um, you can stick to that like i did a video on community yeah i mean that's something that people that that's not like people aren't like man i want to go on youtube and learn about communities like nobody nobody's thinking that right but yeah i read an interesting book and i thought that this would be interesting and i i knew that this wouldn't be like a hit video like the salt video like everyone loves talking about salt right? yeah fun topic <laughs> people getting mad throwing their controllers yeah and, you know that's kind of fun topic but you know i i, I really wanted to 
talked about this idea of community, right? Because it's such an interesting thing for me. Right. So uh, I knew that that wasn't going to be as an explosive video, but I still did it, and I'm still happy that I made the video. I mean, I put a typo in there. Everyone pointed it out, but yeah. Um, I, I worked really hard on that, and like I'm, I'm really happy that that video exists. I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, it's kind of a balance you you want to keep between like you know you want to stay true to yourself, but then um, you know how much are you going to do crowd have crowd pleasing things in your video mm -hmm. uh, finding a right balance. It's, there's nothing wrong with like maybe putting a title that might get more eyes on your video. Like you know people like to call it clickbait or whatever, but you can be tasteful. Yeah. Clickbait. And if you have good content to back it up, as long as you're not lying, you're mm -hmm. gonna get trust. Um, that's the thing about clickbait, right? As long as the content delivers, yeah, then uh, then people won't be too mad about. You know, if you got baited into watching really good content, like you're not gonna get mad, right? Yeah. So, um, my Vice does that really well. Vice will have like a very clickbaity, like the most dangerous drug on the planet. <laughs> when they actually like they actually go to like Brazil and like, you know find this drug and stuff and yeah. you know, it's delivered, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, being being fair and kind of true to your audience is, is also, um, you know, it, it's pretty important. But yeah, just don't go in the deep end where constantly you're thinking only about the audience and not what you want to do. Yeah. That's a, that's a trap that you'll face later because maybe you'll get a high from like a video that gets a lot of clicks, but then you might become known for, you know, something that you don't want to be known for. Yeah. Know? And uh and so, I mean, there are some people who are known in the FTC for things like that, kind of like, uh, like a couple of negative moments, uh -huh. but, um, and you know, sometimes that happens, but just, uh, if, if you can, if you can control it, you kind of want to try to avoid that. Yeah. Know? Um, and, and I struggle with it too. Like, I'm mm -hmm. always like, how can I explain this in a way, or how can I make this? Oh no, people are not going to be interested in that. That's mm -hmm. too like frame data. Like. No, I, no one's gonna care about that. It's like, wait a minute, I, I love talking about this stuff. I'm so interested in this. Yeah. Like, and so, uh, I find a way to do the thing that I like, and uh, and I do my best to get people to get interested in it. If I fail, then at least I'm happy that I got to talk about the thing I want to talk. About. Right. All right. So that's awesome. Later stage thing, but it'll it'll come to you. You'll you'll remember this. Uh, what I'm saying right now, um, perhaps later when when you run into that moment where you you have that dilemma. Yeah. But um, yeah, and and every every content creator has has the same problems. Yeah. You're never the only one with the the problem because it's just that there's not really a community of content creators. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, although I'm starting to like I made a little Discord for some FGC YouTubers. Yeah. And it's just starting, but um, like, it it yeah I think that. Uh, it, it's interesting to see how many people are running into the same problem and stuff like that. Yeah. But anyways, I, I've rambled. Um, yeah. So go oh, ahead. that's okay. I was going to say something like that. Like, community is an important thing. I mean, we are the FGC, right? The, we're a fighting game community. And so something like that, like you starting a Discord for FGC YouTubers, I think people in our community tend to get intimidated by a lot of things. So content helps people kind of see another, a different side or a different picture. Or it kind of shows them a different, like, perspective on something and it makes some people feel a little bit better and then like it kind of shows us again that we are a community and people are willing to produce all kinds of content and so i think that's yeah, why it's yeah. so important and again you even just creating a discord for you know fgc youtubers that's another part of community so now it's like people who are creating content for the community are kind of you know there's a place for you guys to to talk and and discuss all those sorts of things and yeah that's yeah. what i love that's, so much about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well um yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely useful when you go to like events and stuff. Sometimes when you go to mm -hmm. an event, you feel kind of like an like a loner, outcast. Even if it's the FGC, where yeah. you know people and stuff, it's kind of like it's kind of a you know in in the FGC, and uh, it can be intimidating and stuff like that. So yeah, um, yeah it's good to know that uh, you know uh, that you do have people. Uh, that you can talk to about yeah. whatever you're doing, whatever your interests are. And I'm sure ed players are, are tight because there aren't a lot of you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I thought that there weren't a lot of us, but 
the Twitter exposure to all the Ed players just makes me feel like there's so many of us because all we do is like have to deal with the backlash of people talking trash about our character and then like you know <laughs> people tagging me in tech videos now like we just all have this like little yeah. it's like it feels like a bigger portion of the community than it actually is but that's the nice yeah. thing about it um and it's funny because most ed players are always putting content out for ed related things oh, i mean yeah. a couple of japanese ed players you know talk to me like i asked a japanese ed player for advice and he puts out content sometimes but it's kind of nice to see that like international yeah. content like that's another huge thing for me because i travel um i try to go to japan like i'm trying to go to japan once a year but i also have like video game friends in bangkok you know my family's from thailand so i go yeah. to thailand and hang out with the dance game scene and it would be nice to like create content oh. when i'm there about that portion of the world you know like what they do in their scene yeah. and how, how they do stuff so yeah yeah this yeah is... that, that, that... I'm sorry, I think it's cutting off. Yeah, I think it's cutting out a little bit, but oh, okay, All right. It's good oh, now. Yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. that's pretty much all I've got. I don't have any other major questions, but you kind of closed yeah, it yeah. up really nicely. So awesome. Yeah. Um, if you if you need any help with any of the video stuff, technical mm -hmm. stuff, you can always like DM me on. Uh, I think we follow each other now, so yeah. Uh, you can always just ask me. Uh, don't be afraid. I'm always like helping people with content. Like James Chen just messaged me yesterday. Uh, yeah. Can you look at my. I'm trying this new content. Cool. Um, I, you know, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like, I have a, I have a Discord where I have a video production like channel just for like making video stuff. I'm always trying mm -hmm. to answer uh, questions and stuff like that. But um, right. but yeah, if you have any any questions about the technical stuff or you know inspiration or, or whatever, you know, you can always uh, you can always uh, message me. Great. And I'll try to get back as uh, soon as I can. So awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah, it was really, really good to talk to you. And again, thank you for kind of coming on to Exo Academy. I know Persia's putting on a lot of stuff and she's doing, She's a, she is a one woman show. I mean, she has people who are like helping her out, but all the content yeah, she puts I mean, out, that's all her. So yeah, it's, 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 like for me, it's like pretty easy. She's just like, all right, go, you know, go talk to Piki Chan. Yeah. <laughs> just date. Just yeah. Talk. So I really appreciate I, you. I, I'm like, I just park her on my calendar. Uh -huh. She's like, you know, connecting like all these people and everything. I know. So thank you so much for talking to me tonight. And I, yeah. I just really, really appreciate all the advice. And I think all the patrons, you know, who view the content like today in this video, guys, um, you know, there's a lot of good information, not just about content creation, but just about building yourself as a person and kind of coming, coming to figure out like what you want to do, like within this community, which is awesome. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Okay. And uh, good luck at upcoming soon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. final uh, rounds next week. I leave on round. Thursday. Yeah. All right. Uh, good luck. Awesome. Thank uh, you. And, uh, and have some fun. I will. Right. Have a good night. Well, have Thank a good you. morning, I guess. It's a good night for good me. Morning, great. Yeah. Thank All you. Right. Bye. All right. See you later. Bye.